T-Virus is a man-made weapon designed and programmed by humans to perform actions which kill humans. This was done by the Umbrella Corporation. Once the host body is dead, the T-Virus engages its singularly hideous skill set. The reanimation of dead cells. Zombie movies have been done since cameras were rolling. Just about everything has been done that you can do. But nevertheless, when you start to look at the scripts and the stories that are on the offering, and the like, you start to come up with ideas that are different, and you go, well, you know, I'm going to throw my towel into this ring because I really want to see what I can do with this. Uh, Resident Evil, we're not 28 days later, and I don't want to compromise what that is. So we need to discuss the, the, the boot camp, the undead boot camp, you know, what kind of movement we're talking about. I just want Alex to be completely in sync with what you're doing. Cool. It's extremely difficult to make undead frightening. We've tried to do something a little different with them this time. We've made the undead a little more aggressive. The virus has evolved somewhat. We've just tried to make them a little more frightening than they were in the first film. We've used a choreographer here who has really worked very hard on creating a sort of the rules of the undead. We're going to have all kinds of different dynamics and qualities naturally that are going to spring up from the actors themselves. And also For the initial research, we went right away back to the script. We took a really good look at what the writer was trying to go for. And Derek did an incredible script analysis, which he formulated into a document that he called the Undead Bible. And that kind of put everyone on the same page. I just want to see how they look on film, how they're going to move, yeah. how they're going to react when they're close to getting flesh. Yeah. The idea for that is partially contained in here. This is a this is a play-by-play -play for you, and for if it meets to your approval, it's a basic guideline for anyone who's going to be undead. It's good for the actors to know, okay, this is the physiology and what occurs in the body based on that physiology. The Bible yeah. itself is a completely technical document. We had to go through the entire script. Every instance of the undead had to be sort of accounted for. When it comes right down to it again, it's not that they're undead, it's, it's that there's a virus that makes them undead. The T-virus moves from entry point to the adrenal system glands located on top of the kidneys. Seizing the adrenal system allows the T-virus to disseminate itself throughout the entire body instantly. This accomplished, the T-Virus dispatches a kill team, which travels up the spine, into the skull, directly to the pineal gland. Besieged by the virus, there is a swelling, and then a fatal bursting, of the pineal gland. The host body is now dead. The T-Virus then begins its work of reanimating dead cells. Organs being composed of groups of cells are reanimated, and the body being composed of an organized group of organs comes back to life now is an undead. After you've got that down, you go, okay, well, now you've got all of these theoretical things that the undead do. Now you've got the challenge of actually translating that into action. You actually have to physicalize all of this to train the actors for what exactly happens after they get bitten by another undead. We had boot camps for four days for the principal performers who would go undead. All of the featured, that means a featured undead is somebody who has a role, but they don't have speaking lines. We had a smattering of races, we had a smattering of sizes, ages, temperaments and dispositions and the like. We had quite a, quite a good team. The undead are not human. The human form is simply a shell, a vessel animated by an unthinking virus. Thus, there is no human to reason with, no logic that will counter their drive. The human features are simply a mask, the eyes an empty, hollow gaze. 
we go immediately right into the work of the, un the undeadness in the eyes, the not thereness, because that is the key to the undead. We focus on solid objects. You know, if I'm walking down the street, I'll look at the tree, I'll look at the, s the sidewalk, I'll look at the building, I'll look, and that's how you orient yourself visually. And what we want to do is to kind of cut that connection so that there's, there's nothing going on, basically. The actual being is gone, and because the being is gone, there is no mind either. The undead are attracted to the life force of the living, like a magnet. This is a powerful basic drive. They will ceaselessly and relentlessly move toward the living. Uh, so let's just start walking around, moving around, you know, different qualities. So after we would get the focus going in the eyes, we would immediately start to work on forward mobility. We developed this thing called liquid zombie and zen zombie, which is a way for the Resident Evil breed of zombie to move and interact with the living. The zen aspect is the undead always move towards the living target, and they're relentless. They're always moving towards you. You have to imagine that you're in like water, and any, anywhere he pushes you, everything else comes forward. You can push them this way. They take the motion, but the next available thing comes forward. And like as a human, as a human, you, you know, if somebody started pushing you in the head, you immediately, your neck goes tight to prevent them from pushing your head back. That's not what a, an undead does. They, they'll just, their head will go back and their chest will come out or whatever is the next available thing. So getting that concept in was the next step so that, so that they were always leading towards the, uh, the living target no matter what. And that gives them the relentless quality that makes them so bizarre when they're swarming you. As the undead come into close contact with the living, they are energized and their hunger for the life force becomes insatiable. The only way to get closer to the life force is to occupy the same space. This is why the undead eat the living. The last thing that we did, uh, we went into the attack because there were, there is this point in time that the undead do lock on to that living life and they're going to go in, they're going to go in for the kill to try to get as close, you know, to consume this life force. So you get a swarm of zombies coming towards you and it's a persistence factor, they are attracted to life force, right, they have this affinity and that was one thing that delineated our undead from other undead, they just don't attack for the sake of eating someone's flesh because they're hungry or whatever, it's because they can't get any closer other than to get inside which means to tear apart and consume. The makeup just put, I mean, you're sitting there, you watch your face before you get the makeup put on, right? And there you are, normal you. And then you get all this hideous crap shoveled onto your face by some of the best makeup artists in, uh, in Toronto. When this stuff is put on your face, you suddenly come to life in a certain way. And it's not scary at all. You're not, you realize that now you've got this tool to use. And this would happen with the background players as well as the, as well as the featured guys. That really put them into the mood. And also made them sort of, for some reason, want to do the best undead that they could. told Alexander Witt was that we would handle all the undead stuff so he didn't have to think about it, right? He could concentrate on telling the rest of the story and that we would handle all of this, the world of the undead for him because it's a logistic nightmare, right? He doesn't want to be dealing with that when he's got other things that he could do. The guys that we trained in boot camp really brought these characteristics to the set with them. Didn't matter what you threw at them. The other huge portion of our hats was coaching between takes, which was also a very intense process. Uh, we're taking care of all the undead between every take. We want each actor, each performer, to be able to work and think with it and create their own individual undead. We actually ended up coaching 
more days and way more people than I had suspected or the producers had, you know, suspected. It was a huge job. The going did get tough uh, during the shoot. It wasn't all just, hey, we're here. Uh, there was work, you know, and there was sleepless nights. And there was, there was te technical issues that seemed unsolvable. One of the big scenes that we shot at uh, City Hall, it's right at the end, of course, when, when the undead swarm. And if it looks stupid, the whole movie will look stupid, right? There were 300 people that had to be processed. For instance, like someone that's completely green, they have to know how the virus works. They have to get the undeadness in the eyes and everything about the physicalness and look incredibly real on film. When we first started our research, our goal was to get the 20-minute zombie. And as we got further and further along, we realized that we actually had to get it down to the five-minute zombie. We had 300 people, basically all totally green, and they were doing a marvelous yeah. job. Commercial, and back to action, action, camera. I gained a lot of skills out of doing this film. I had a great team. Sometimes it was hard. Sometimes it was tough. Sometimes it was thrilling. The experience for me was great, you know. We're telling a story. We're having fun. We're trying to make it scary. And we hope we've done our jobs. Uh -huh.